you know, I, I think there's a feeling that there's an adversarial relationship that is not coming from the police either. I mean, at least not from the chief of police. I mean, I, I just don't think that exists. I think we get along okay. Well, I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. But it's out there. Yeah, it's out there. Well, I can help you out. <laughs> yeah. It's coming <laughs> from a columnist that writes articles very negative about us. It's coming from editorials that have been very negative. That's where it's coming from. And it's been nothing else to refute that. Um, in a December 5th, 2010 editorial, Columbia Tribune columnist Bob Roper said he worried that the CPD would start engaging in fearful policing where they would not act aggressively enough because of fear for the CPRB. Do you feel like this is or at any point has happened? Boy, you know, that is, uh, it's a good theory. Uh, it's a theory that comes up when you talk about a lot of, um, police review or scrutiny, but in a way it's kind of like a um, deterrent effect. You know, you have police try to do programs where they come up with something and they say, well, a good example is when we do our big burglary prevention deals over the holidays and we put out extra officers and we do all these special things. And let's say the burglary numbers drop. It is absolutely impossible for us to prove that we deterred those burglars. We can hope that we did, and maybe if we have years and years and years of data, we might be able to back that up with something. But you can't prove deterrence, because how would you ever know that a crime wasn't committed because you did X, unless the criminal comes and says, you know, I was going to go break in all those houses, but gosh, you guys were doing that burglary suppression <laughs> detail, so I said I didn't want to do that. We're kind of in the same situation here. Do I think that we have, and, and I'm going to put this in perspective, we have a huge amount. I would say we've got to be getting close to the 50% mark of officers that have five years or less of service. I think with that in mind, do I think it's in the back of their minds because they know that it's going to go beyond the internal affairs review, that it could go beyond, you know, and, and I don't think it's from this angle of, you know, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. It's that fear of, okay, I feel like I know, I know what the policy is, and the use of force is usually where this comes into play. I know what the use of force policy is, but, you know, gosh, what when it goes outside the police department walls, is someone going to say, oh, yeah, well, we don't care what the policy is. We just don't like the way this went. And that's the thing, that's the overwhelming feeling I think they get when we don't have these set rules about misconduct and all these other things, findings, this sameness that we could have. It causes them to feel a little bit of fear because the known is, you know, you you go out and use excessive force on someone, you can be guaranteed what's going to happen within these walls. You can be guaranteed you're going to be found improper. You can be guaranteed there's going to be discipline imposed. Beyond that, there's always the threat of a civil, civil suit that could come from the person. What's scary, I think, is the unknown of what goes on when it goes outside, and you've got folks saying, and, and the, Billups, you know, the Billups case comes to mind because there was this disconnect between did the officer have the right to put hands on Derek Phillips at that point? Well, there's arguments that could be made on both sides, but not being in agreement about use of force in general, you know, when you have the right to detain someone, what's reasonable suspicion? Those are things that, as a police officer, you live and die by. Probable cause, reasonable suspicion, use of force, Fourth Amendment. you got to know those things in your sleep, and we need those people to know those things, too, because that's what we're going to be talking about in some of these instances. Right. Um, board Chairwoman uh, Ellen Lacurto Martinez, I think that's how you say it, um, was quoted by the Tribune mm -hmm. saying, as a board member, the changes they're trying to make are intended to limit oversight. This is trying to limit us. Obviously, the CPRB is not completely behind the proposal. Would the department be willing to work um, with them to come to some type of compromise on the issue? I will tell you that a big uh, reason for this was we think this everybody needs to come to the table and discuss it. And this kind of came up when we went through the whole process of, do we need a board? Okay, we need a board. Okay, what's it going to be like? And a lot of the police department got left out of that. And I'll tell you, um, some of the most well-respected people, you know, scholarly type people that know about these things and have studied them, outside law enforcement type people, all have said, if you're going to have a review board, you need to do it with the department and not to it. 
the with the department situations are your New Orleans Police Department, if you don't know a lot of history about them, they had major issues, major corruption issues. You do this to a department when you have got such a level of corruption that's permeated uh, the department that you're coming in and you're saying, we're going to oversee this because we can't trust your internal affairs unit. You've demonstrated, you know, you got cops going out there on the take. You know, down there, there are cops murdering witnesses. Obviously, that's a pretty high level of corruption. Um, otherwise, it needs to be kind of a cooperative effort because uh, you're working with each other all the time. You know, each each side is kind of dependent on the other in some ways. So we don't really feel like we ever kind of got those opportunities. I think that's what we're hoping this will foster is everybody coming together and saying well, let's admit here and I think I don't know if you guys were there when uh, Rex Campbell uh, Mr. Campbell he's an older gentleman he came and spoke a couple meetings ago and said uh, encourage the closed sessions and I can tell you that was pretty significant because he was on the original exploratory committee for the board uh, they were very much against that and and it's just like anything else we knew it wasn't going to be perfect I mean anytime you delve into a brand new thing what's the chances of it being perfect the first time not very good especially if the government's involved I mean really I mean that's just the way look at how many times we pass a law and then we go oh okay well we left out this and we forgot about that this could happen and there's a loophole here and so we got to kind of refine it a little bit that's just normal we think we're to the refining stage we think we've recognized hey we might want to all be on the same page with misconduct uh, like I said before, either department's doing a great job or people don't really want to come be involved in all this, whatever this is right now. Um, I think there's some really great things that could come out of it because as an officer, number one is an officer, number two is a citizen, number three is a public relations sergeant, I can tell you we see this as a huge opportunity for people to have more trust in the police department. And so we don't want it to not work. We want it to work. We want people to feel like they've got this extra outlet. We plan on probably learning something along the way. You know, part of the things they're tasked with are, you know, giving some feedback about policies, looking at things and saying, hey, you guys might want to think about this, going out and doing community outreach. I mean, they're kind of trying in their own way to help us have this better relationship with the community, which I appreciate, helps me in my job. So we want it to be better. We want everybody to be okay with it not just us not just citizens everybody that's involved we get officer buy-in which I think you know from the beginning like I said I don't think there's ever been a 100% we hate this we don't ever want to do it we think it has no value I think most people recognize the value but the values diminished when we can't agree on some really basic concepts for you know for everybody so uh, you know that's the hope. The hope is this is going to foster discussion. We can all get together and say, hey, yeah, you know what? It's been a year and a half, two years. Probably time to sit down and take a look and go. There's probably some things we could do better. I mean, we do that as a police department all the time with policies, so it's probably probably a good time to do it with this. And we hope that that's what happens. Okay, I appreciate. It. No problem. Yeah. And I do have one last question. Sure. Kind of all related to the board. Sure. How do occur, ball? Within the last, I would say. I knew it was coming at some point. Okay. Within the last week or week and a half or two, you stopped allowing video posts on the on their Facebook page. I was wondering when you were going to ask me about this. So, the city does not have a formal social media policy. So here's what happened. Um, they had one written up for a while. You know, we only got three city attorneys, I think. So they obviously get pretty overloaded. Um, they, this kind of came back up again because uh, there it was recognized that like we're using Facebook. I think there's a Stormwater Facebook page. Did you know that? I didn't know. I that didn't know the other day. <laughs> Stormwater has their own Facebook page. Uh, fire department has some limited stuff. So the city said, you know what? We need to make a policy. We need to all be on the same page. Use it the same way. So we actually have a meeting tomorrow all the city communicators, so the people like me and in the other departments, to kind of get together and say, how do we want to use social media? What's the best policy? So they said in the meantime, they want everybody to just limit things to us pushing out information and okay. postings until they come up with their full-blown uh, policy. Yeah. Okay. That's so fine. the attorneys are going to look at it. I guess. That's it. Right. <laughs> so nothing nefarious. Uh, I, uh, I kind of... You know, they want all of our feedback about it, and I'm one of those big uh, 
I like the, I'd rather, I'd rather have to f deal with the people that post at three in the morning, you know, F the police or whatever. I mean, I can deal with that in three seconds. I don't want, I know that's a risk, I guess is what I'm saying, but I, I don't personally want to lose the value that the feedback that we can do, but I don't ultimately get to make that decision. So okay. I'm advocating I like doing it, even though it can be time consuming, but right. I, the decision won't be mine. So just send it to you in a message on the Facebook. If I want to <laughs> post a video, just send it to the police department's Facebook in a message. You know, at this point, they just want us posting the, you know, little, hey, we're looking for this person, this, that, and the other. I'm hoping after tomorrow, in fact, I got a big packet in my quest to clean my desk. I threw everything in one big pile. I've got a big packet that I printed off that I have to read before my meeting tomorrow about uh, social media stuff. So, uh, and we're going to look at what other cities do and all the recommendations from the attorneys and, you know, there's always got to be attorneys involved. So, Definitely. I'm hoping after tomorrow we'll have a little bit, I think after tomorrow their ideas, they're going to take everybody's ideas finish the policy and then we'll know how to go forward. They just didn't want us all to do Is that sunshine or probably not? Uh, you know, I don't know. It came from, uh, there's really nothing. I glanced through it and there's really nothing super. It probably, I don't know if it wouldn't be because it has to do with the ordinance. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It didn't come from me. It came from Tony Messina. So she'd be the person to ask. Okay. But.